Since I'm talking to an audience that's gathered in Prague to celebrate this old road, I don't have to tell you how popular Route 66 is. But, as my job is to uh, inspire road trips, share America's story, I'm going to talk to you today about the ultimate American road trip. Whether this is your first trip or your 10th trip, there's a couple of things you really need to get the most out of a Route 66 adventure. One is the Easy 66 Guide for Travelers by Jerry McClanahan. This isn't so much a planning guide as it is a travel guide. So don't worry if you can't find it while you're still in, at home in Europe. You can pick it up most any place along Route 66, and I know of several locations in Joliet that sell this. So that's not a worry. But you do need the Route 66 navigation app. This is more than just having a navigator in the car to keep you on the road while you're traveling Route 66. It's also a tool to help you plan your trip as there is an event calendar. And adding an event to your uh, trip, well, that just enhances the entire experience. Now, if it's your first trip while you're here at Route66Navigation.com, you can download the Ultimate Route 66 Guide available in about eight languages. And while you're at it, pick up a copy of the Mother Road Route 66 Passport. This little treasure, put together by the same folks who uh, offer the Route 66 Navigation app, will uh, add a little something special to your trip. What you do is it's a customizable souvenir. You take that to locations along Route 66 for a custom stamp, a little souvenir, you can collect autographs along the way, make notes, and then when you get home, you've got something that'll spark memories for years to come. Now, most folks, what they do is travel Route 66 across the heartland of America. They start from east to west, and that means it begins in Chicago. Chicago gets a bad rap, you know, the media kind of tells stories Chicago's like any big city, whether it's Prague or Amsterdam or London or Los Angeles. You need a little bit of planning, a little bit of common sense, you'll do just fine. Chicago's a dynamic and exciting city. Lots of things to see to do. Uh, whatever your taste, whatever your interest. So Route 66 Adventure starts there. In Illinois, Route 66 has a unique character. It's big cities. It's small, all-American little farm towns, and a few things in between. Traditionally, and historically even, uh, for almost 100 years, a westbound Route 66 trip out of Chicago begins with a hearty breakfast at Lou Mitchell's. What will you see on Route 66 in Illinois? Well, it sets the tone for the rest of your Route 66 adventure. You got quirky roadside attractions. You got great little restaurants that uh, have a Route 66 connection for going back decades. An example would be the Cozy Dog Drive In down in Springfield, Illinois. Cozy Dog has a con direct connection to Bob Waldmeyer, the famous artist that was also the inspiration for Fillmore in the movie Cars. Route 66 in Illinois, like Illinois and all of the states, is full of surprises, interesting things to see and do. The Route 66 experience in Springfield, Illinois, that's one example. And for quirky attractions, it doesn't get much quirkier than the Pink Elephant Antique Mall in Livingston, Illinois. By the way, if you're a fan of American history, Springfield, Illinois, has uh, got lots and lots of things to see because of its association with President Abraham Lincoln. Uh, his home is just off Route 66 in Springfield. His presidential library and museum is actually along Route 66 in Springfield. Missouri will be the second state that you get to. You cross the Mississippi River into St. Louis, and there again, another big city. I, I think part of the reason so many Route 66 enthusiasts miss the big cities or bypass the Route 66 uh, cities 
or try to get through the cities as fast as possible is we've sold Route 66 as uh, small town America. Well, Route 66 is, for all intents and purposes, it's a linear community, a network of small towns. So along Route 66, even in cities like St. Louis, it's still a small town. Step up to Ted Drew's frozen custard on Chippewa in St. Louis and see if you don't feel like you're in a small town in America. But Route 66 in Missouri, too, is also scenic wonders because you're driving through the beautiful, picturesque Ozark Mountains. But the key to what really gives Route 66 the magic is the people. Doesn't matter if it's Illinois, Kansas, or California, it's the people that give Route 66 its magic. So when you stop at places like the Wagon Wheel Motel and visit with Connie Eccles, that's Route 66. And you stop out at Gay Parita and uh, Paris Springs, the station there, and talk to Barb Turner, well, that's the magic of Route 66. But if you really, and there's other things. We have, I mentioned, the quirky attractions and smile-inducing places. Well, you can't get stranger than the Uranus Fudge Company and General Store. Juvenile humor reigns supreme there. And as a bonus, well, they have great fudge. But Route 66 in Missouri is just full of great experiences, great opportunities, picturesque drives. You could even do great walkabouts. Lace up your walking shoes and cross the Mississippi River on the Chain of Rocks Bridge. Not only great photo ops, just a great experience. And once again, you'll meet some of the most fascinating people out on that walk. Kansas gets a little short on miles. That doesn't mean it's not big on smiles. Uh, there's about less than 14 miles of Route 66 in Kansas. But there's so much to see and do in that 14 miles. From the Brush Creek Bridge and... and uh, the Riverton store, been there for, gosh, over a hundred years. Galena is a great picturesque little old mining town. Uh, speaking of mining, the mining museum is well worth a visit. Travel down to Baxter Springs and see if you can catch up with Pam Mitchell there at the Tourism Office, Chamber of Commerce. She's always good for tips on what to see, what to do, what to eat. And a couple blocks off Route 66 is the Baxter Springs Museum. Uh, that'll give you a great insight into the history and attractions in Kansas. Now, I have a real partial affinity for Oklahoma. Oklahoma is an adventure in itself. Ah. <sighs> You cross in from Kansas through some old mining towns, Quapaw, Miami, with the Coleman Theater. Add that one to your list if your schedule allows. Take a tour of the Coleman Theater. What a beautiful place. And you've got other things. You know, you can tell that I like my food. And, uh, well, you're starting to get out west now. So stop by Wayland's Cuckoo Burger. Been there for over 50 years. And uh, try yourself a good, hearty buffalo burger. We've been talking a lot about not skipping and rushing the big cities. Tulsa is an example of why you don't rush the big cities. Just one example there is a Buck Adams is waiting to greet you uh, along 11th Street in Tulsa. Lots and lots of things to see and do in Tulsa. you got places like Pops and Arcadia. It's a futuristic store where they sell more than 500 different kinds of well, soda pop from all over the world, and strange flavors. Who's ever thought of having a bacon soda on a hot summer day? I haven't seen anybody do that one yet. you got photo ops with colorful murals. you got the National Route 66 Museum in Oklahoma. Uh, a little bit of a somber attraction, but for our uh, friends there in Europe, at Fort Reno, outside of El Reno, Oklahoma, this is a historic American military installation from, it was in use from the 1870s through the 1950s. There are, as far as I know, and I could be wrong on this, but it is, it is the only um, German and Italian military cemeteries 
in the United States. It is the final resting place for some uh, POWs from World War II. A somber stop, thought-provoking stop, and an interesting stop along Route 66 in Oklahoma. Lots and lots of things. And again, see what takes center place for me? Food. Tally's Cafe, that's in Tulsa. Great recommendation. One of my favorites is the uh, Clanton's Cafe down in Veneta, Oklahoma. One family owned since 1929 and uh, tremendous food. My recommendation, a cup of hot black coffee, chicken fried steak, and some uh, blackberry cobbler. Uh, the second option there in Veneta is the Highway Cafe. This is a little gym with lots of great photo opportunities, lots of good food, and lots of smiling folk. Either one can't go wrong. You got ghost towns, museums, so many attractions in Oklahoma. And as you get towards the Texas state line, you start getting that feeling that you're getting into the West. But Oklahoma's got surprises too. Route 66, well, America, since Route 66 is an American experience, it's not surprising that uh, Route 66, all along Route 66, you can find stories of immigrants and you can find celebrations of immigrants in their native homeland. One of the largest Czech festivals in the world outside of Chechia takes place in Yukon, Oklahoma. Did you know that? A celebration of dancing, food, beverages. I mentioned you find these things all along Route 66. In Chicago, you have the Berghof. That's a uh, one family owned German restaurant. Been there since the 1890s. The famous Ariston Cafe that was established by a uh, Greek immigrant. Um, I'm thinking Peter Niehaus might have closed already, but he, he hasn't. He was talking about closing. But if he's still open in Elkhart, Illinois, you'll find the Wild Hair Cafe. And Peter is a, a Dutch hydraulic engineer that came to the United States via South Africa. Texas is... Well, Texas is like... Kansas. It's a little short on miles, but not on smiles. Lots and lots and lots of exciting things in Texas. Uh, great place to stay. You want to experience something really special. Check into the Western Motel in Shamrock, Texas, and wait for a Texas sunset, and then enjoy the lights as they come on across the street at the historic and iconic You Drop In Cafe. Better known to a lot of people as Ramones in the movie Cars. Photo stops, photo attractions. <coughs> and, uh, well, the midpoint, you've got to have a photo stop at the midpoint of Route 66, the halfway point between Chicago and Santa Monica. And while you're there, you might as well grab a bite to eat across the street at the Midpoint Cafe. And when you're in Amarillo, don't overlook the uh, uh, Sixth Street Corridor. The Big Texan, Cadillac Ranch, those may get all the attention, but it's on 6th Street where you'll find the real Route 66. McLean, Texas, pretty much a ghost town. They do have a great museum, the uh, Route 66 Museum, and a barbed wire museum, a museum dedicated to barbed wire. Don't laugh. It's actually interesting. And I won't, uh, I won't spoil the surprise, but uh, McLean, Texas also has a connection to the sinking of the Titanic. Uh, for places to stay and eat in McLean, well, you can't go wrong with the mid-1950s Cactus Inn Motel. Angela Moreland has done a superb job with uh, the Cactus Inn Motel. Right next door is the Red River Steakhouse. If you're looking for a good Texas steakhouse, you have the Red River Steakhouse I can highly recommend. And in Shamrock, Texas, next to the uh, Western Motel is Griff's. Another great steakhouse. From Texas, when you get to the west side of the Texas panhandle, things began to change. All of a sudden, you're in the west. The highway drops off the Cap Rock outside of uh, Adrian, Texas. And all of a sudden, 
you're going to start to see the landscapes made famous in all these old Western movies with John Wayne and others. It's in New Mexico. New Mexico is is unique. Even uh, it has a rich blending of American and tradition and Mexican culture, and interwoven with that is a very rich Native American history. In New Mexico, you can visit villages like Acoma, where people have lived for well a thousand years, and you can visit the ruins of places like Pecos along the pre-1937 alignment of Route 66 that loops through Santa Fe. When the Spanish conquistadors came through uh, this area in the uh, 16th century, Pecos was the largest city they had encountered north of Mexico. Today, these picturesque ruins along the Pecos River are a sight to behold. This is another reason to have the uh, Route 66 navigation app and the Easy 66 guide for travelers. Route 66 in New Mexico has a split personality. There's two alignments. Before 1937, the highway made a big loop up through historic Santa Fe, uh, one of the uh, oldest cities in the United States dating back to, gosh, I guess the 17th century. And then the newer alignment went straight line, basically through where I-40 is today, into Albuquerque. Now, Albuquerque is an old city, and uh, but the Central Avenue core, since it is a big city, is chock full of museums and diners and neon great, great attractions. Don't overlook the big cities. Of course, however, most everybody's familiar with the Blue Swallow Motel in Tucumcari, but Tucumcari is more than just neon and neat motels like the Roadrunner Lodge. Let me tell you something real quick about the Roadrunner Lodge. Uh, this has been preserved in, as a 1960s time capsule with an overlay of modern amenities that we've come to expect as travelers. If you check in, ask David Brenner when you make your reservations or check in, ask David Brenner for one of the tiki rooms. Tiki rooms, tiki bars were very big in the United States in the mid-1960s. It was a quirky thing, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, you'll see what I mean when you get one of those rooms. I mentioned Tucumcari being more than just neon. You have so many exciting things in uh, Tucumcari and some, so many surprises. One of those is the Mesa Lands Community uh, College Dinosaur Museum. This is affiliated with the Smithsonian, and it's one of the uh, top paleontology museums in the American Southwest. Depending on when you plan your trip, you can check with uh, the Dinosaur Museum. They offer paleontology digs into the surrounding desert. But to give you an idea of the diversity of Route 66 in New Mexico, the Native American connection, you have ghost towns, and not just any ghost towns. You have ghost towns like uh, Quibero, that, uh, well, it's probably close to 200-year-old village. Few people live there, a handful. You have attractions like the TP Curios. Uh, Richardson's Trading Company. This is an authentic Native American trading post. Great place to buy some Native American jewelry. One family owned since 1913. And in Albuquerque, Route 66 skirts the Old Town District. This is well worth your time. Uh, live music, quaint shops, fascinating restaurants, all in a district that's 200 to 250 years old. Lots to see and do in Albuquerque for sure. And this takes us to my home, Arizona. Since this is my home, I'm kind of partial to all the sights, the sounds, the attractions. Uh, the, in Holbrook, uh, you've got great food. And Holbrook, of course, is the gateway to the painted desert. Lots of attractions there. Check out the uh, Navajo County Museum in the old Navajo County Courthouse. We put an emphasis on seeing the jail downtown, uh, downstairs. I'll tell you more about that jail in just a moment. You have your trip into Arizona starts with the trading post like Chief Yellow Horse below the cliffs at the Arizona State Line, Lupton, Arizona. 
In western Arizona, you have the longest uninterrupted segment of Route 66, nearly 160 miles of smiles, and that includes the beautiful climb through Sigdreves Pass and the Black Mountains to Oatman, where the burrows still roam free. That stretch going up through Oatman, I don't think a one-eyed blind man's going to take a bad photograph. Probably the most scenic section of Route 66, hands down. You got the Powerhouse Museum in Kingman and, and uh, interesting artwork. Native American history all along Route 66, from Trading Post to Peach Springs, Arizona, on the Wallapai Indian Reservation. And if your trip allows and you have the right kind of vehicle, make inquiries in Peach Springs first, but ask about the Diamond Creek Road. That is a graded gravel road, pretty well maintained, but it's best you need a permit, and that'll give you an opportunity to check on road conditions. Uh, but that's the only road where you can drive to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And of course, the Grand Canyon. What's a trip to Arizona without a little detour or two? Uh, Grand Canyon is a few miles off Route 66. You can stop in Williams, a, a really exciting, dynamic little town, and take an old train up the Grand Canyon. You beat the traffic, you get to relax, you get to see some of the Arizona countryside. Or take a little side trip down south to Sedona. All along Route 66, if your schedule allows, plan a little side trip or two. Uh, in Texas, uh, if you drive just a little bit south of Amarillo, Palo Duro Canyon, that's, that's astounding. In Oklahoma, you can drive just a little bit south off Route 66 out of Weatherford, Oklahoma to the Wichita Mountains. Another stunning place to see. Uh, get an idea on places. Check for things like kinglandtourism.com that has full information on uh, local wineries, uh, microbreweries, hiking trails. We'll talk more about that as well. Um, we talked about the uh, jail in Holbrook. There is a narrated self-guided historic district walking tour in Kingman. And you can find that on the kingmantourism.com website. It's a, that is a virtual tour as well as a physical tour. And the jail, the tour includes the territorial jail in Kingman that was built before Arizona became a state in 1912. Interestingly enough, the concrete work was done by a local contractor, but the jail cells were, create, were built by the same company that built the jail cells in Holbrook, the Pauley Jail Company out of Missouri. Uh, and I was very surprised when I was doing research for the walking tour I was very surprised to learn that that jail is, um, those jail cells, the Pauley Jail Company, is still in business, still owned by the Pauley family, and they've been in business since 1856. And that takes us to California. Well, you cross the Colorado River. Um, if you're doing this during the summer, be prepared. Temperatures in the Colorado River Valley and into the Mojave Desert often exceed 40 or 50 degrees centigrade. Carry lots of water. Uh, Route 66 in the Mojave Desert is kind of segmented, broken. Some bridges have washed out. Bridges need to be replaced. So you'll have to jump back and forth between I-40 and uh, Route 66. But it's really worth your effort to see things like Amboy, Amboy Crater. Amboy Crater is a very short hike. Do not do this in the middle of the day during the summer, no matter how much water you have. And whatever time you take that little hike, it's only a few miles, make sure you let the people at Amboy know where you're going and when you expect to be back. It could be a life-saving, and I don't, I can't put enough emphasis on that. Route 66 in California is probably one of the most diverse experiences on Route 66. You cross on the Colorado River into Needles, California. Kind of a down at the heel, but a fascinating little town. Take a get a tour. Uh, if you go downtown on the original alignment of Route 66, which you can find with the Route 66 navigation app and the Easy 66 guide for travelers, uh, go downtown and on the square by the El Garces, the old railroad hotel at Harvey House, 
uh, the museum's on one side of the street, and you can ask for a tour of the historic El Garces. That's pretty neat. But as you cross the desert, don't miss Goff's, uh, the uh, old schoolhouse in Mojave Desert Cultural Center. There's a cafe in Ludlow. A few little attractions here and there, mostly desert scenery. But I talk about diversity. You have this vast, empty Mojave Desert. And you also have one of the largest metropolitan areas in the United States. Route 66 at the end of Cajon Pass from San Bernardino out to Santa Monica is one town, one city after another that blurs the line. They run together. Now, a lot of people uh, are intimidated by the traffic in Los Angeles. The traffic in Los Angeles, people have complained about that for at least 75 years. A little bit of planning. Your picture on the bottom left, that is Route 66 Foothill Boulevard near Rancho Cucamonga, California. As you can see, the traffic is not that bad. You plan for a weekend drive or very early morning, and you'll do just fine. But this gives you an example of the diversity of Route 66, the open desert, old ranches, Chinatown, Downtown Los Angeles, Needles, California, the Goff Schoolhouse, Santa Monica Pier, the gathering for old cars, makes for a great photo op, and Santa Monica Pier is filled with attractions. Don't miss the uh, Bob Waldmeyer exhibit at the end of the pier out at Mandy Mendelssohn's last stop shop, and don't forget to see Ian Bowen at uh, the end of the trail shop and get your certificate of completion for a Route 66 adventure. And last but not least, well, come see me in Kingman, Arizona. Take a look at the website, kingman.tours. Lots of information there, but uh, drop me a note. If I'm in town, uh, we can get together maybe for a cup of coffee, or I can add a signature with one of uh, my books that you might be carrying, or I might... Uh, Autograph your uh, passport for you that you can pick up from Route 66 Navigation. Grab a photo at uh, the Route 66 Arch down by the powerhouse. If you feel like stretching your legs a bit, we've got miles and miles of gorgeous hiking trails that uh, include wagon roads in the canyons here, just literally a mile from Kingman, downtown Kingman. I, if you've got a tour group or anything, I sometimes give walking tours or presentations downtown. Um... If you want a scenic overlook in Kingman, drive to the end of 4th Street off Route 66, turn towards the courthouse going north, then drive around the courthouse on, back onto 4th Street and drive two blocks. And at the end, you have an incredible scenic overlook of the buttes, the mesas, the canyons, and Kingman. Well, that gives you an idea. Come see me in Kingman, my friends. Enjoy your Route 66 adventure. Until we meet again, my friends, vaya con Dios.